now is too badly big to slap. Too big, big and, too, and too wealthy. Yeah, uh, Dwayne Johnson, but the rest of the tournament, you know who him as? The Rock. Do you know, I've got so many questions written down, but we're going to literally be going forever. I, I remember you telling me so many fights. You're not, you're not a guy that would back down from a fight, are you? You've had a, many a fight. Ooh, I've been to court a few times. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one here from you, but honestly, I'll, I'll plug the book at the end. Uh, I, I picked up your book when it was on a deal on Amazon, and I'm so glad that I did. I don't know whether you have any control over the pricing of the book or whatever, but... Um, no. I would uh, I would certainly recommend people grab the book. So we've got to get this one in as well. Um, Adrian Street. Oh. <laughs> can, we, can we tell that one? Is that a, a, a public knowledge one? or? Well, yeah. I don't know. Adrian Street. Um, Obviously a well-known guy. This is a tremendous story. Yes, he, he was very well known over here. Um, doing his prancing around like a fairy. Um, we, were, we ended up good pals. Um, but we just fell out again. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah. There's a reason for this as well. And I will tell you that at the end of this story. I married his uh, ex-wife. I took over uh, the running of his kids uh, and everything. Uh, he's got his son, young Adrian, Vincent and Mandy. So he had three children and they became my sort of step kids. And um, they're, they're lovely, lovely, lovely kids. But... Um, Adrian and I he didn't like the fact that I, I was with his ex and he hurt his he hurt himself in the ring one time he, he tore his athlete's tendon and I said to Ada that forget about Jean's uh, maintenance money I will pay her that and when you're back at work right, you can pay me back what you owe me yeah fine okay then great but at the time he had six houses up north those old personal houses. He had six houses up, excuse me, up north, and he had one down south. That didn't count. His wrestling money I was interested in. When he's back working wrestling wise, he could pay me. Well, he came back to wrestling, um, and he didn't attempt to pay me any money. And it's coming up to Christmas time, uh, which mm, middle of November onto about middle of January, there wasn't that much work around, unless you was working abroad. And then it's, uh, you've got family problems then because the wife don't want you to be away near Christmas uh -huh. or in the New Year either. You know? um, so I phoned Ada and I said, like, uh, what about the money you owe me? What money? I said, the maintenance money. Oh, he said, I've got priorities and you're right at the bottom. I said, that's that's silly attitude to take, Ada, because like, uh, if you don't pay me, I'll pay you. He put the phone down. I had to go out, so I went out. And when I came back... Um, she told me that uh, he'd phoned back and said, tell King Cade, if he touches me, I'll have him caught. Well, I want to jump straight in my car and drive up to Manchester because uh, he's threatened me with police. No, I don't like that, you know. <laughs> Even the people that I've had to whack in the pubs, when I had pubs, um, if they said, I'll call the police, well, I'll knock them straight out. You know, but don't talk to me about police. Right. So anyway... Um, she begged me not to go anywhere, so I didn't. Then I got a phone call from about three promoters saying they had to take me off these shows. I said, why is that? Well, Adrian is top of the bill and you're bottom. I went, yeah. He doesn't want, want to work on the same shows as you. So not only is he not paying me, he's now losing me money from the shows. There was Brian Dixon, there was Oric Williams, and there was a couple of others that had to knock me off. So, so there's... You say between them, there's about two and a half months work that I had to actually lose. Right, the street is on the same bills as me, where he's top and I'm bottom. Where I'm top, he's taking himself off. But that went on for nearly a year. And then one time, Brian Dixon phoned me and said, John, will you do a sub job? Be a substitute. And I said, like, uh, I don't do substitute jobs. If his name is not on a bill, then I don't work. He said, but it will be um, beneficial to you. I said, of course it will. She said, no, 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 not just um, financially, but morally. I said, uh-huh. Well, um, how do you mean? And he said, put your boots in your bag and come along to, <laughs> to Slough. So now I'm intrigued. So I put my boots in the bag and I go along to Slough. As I go into the dressing rooms, the, <laughs> the uh, wrestlers said, hello, John, uh, what, uh, what are you doing here? I went, 
I'm a, I'm wrestling, I'm prostituting. You know? Ah, so why? What's the problem? I said, well, street is on a bill. I said, oh, is he? Where is he? Don't know. So I went along all the dressing rooms. There's about seven dressing rooms in now. So I went along them all. He wasn't there. So I dropped my bag in one dressing room. And said to the lads, I'm just going up the bar. I had to go through these double doors into a little hallway and then through double doors into the main auditorium. And as I was going through the first set of doors, on the right hand side was uh, the exit door. The exit door opened and who should walk in was Ada. Well, he's seen me, swung his bag at my head. A foolish thing to do, really, for a fighter, isn't it? Because he's going for the smallest part of your body. So I ducked and hit him. He'd done a complete circle, fell on the floor, which was um, it's a bit silly, really, because there's all these trestle tables. I pulled the tables down on top of him, and I'm tap dancing on top of the tables. Now, the lads have heard this from the dressing room, they've all run out and said, what, what? And they didn't see what was happening. All they saw there was this blonde hair hanging out from under the tables. So they got the tables off him like that, and they took him into the dressing room. I went up to the dressing room, opened the door, I said, um, Adrian, come, come here, I want to talk to you. And I went outside and stood there, probably for about two minutes, but it seemed like half an hour. Um, I opened the door again, Ada, I want to talk to you, come out here. I'm not going to touch you, just talk to you, come out here. Went out again, nothing. So I've gone back in, he says, Ada, he says, you want to say anything to me? You say it in front of all these. So I've gone in, I said, come here, silly sod. I took his arm and just pulled it away. And I pulled it back and he pulled it away again. And he pulled it back. And I pulled it again. And then he relaxed. And now I know what's coming. You know, he's relaxing to throw one. Too late. My forehead hit the nose. And I heard the crunch. Then I went bang, bang a few times. And there was a big old guy called Roy Ball Davis. Yep. Right, Skull Murphy's father. He grabbed hold of me. I'm facing him, but he's got me in a beer rug, pinning me arms down as well. So I can't do nothing. My feet is off the ground, so I've got no leverage. I said, put me down, Roy. And he goes, no, you've got to kill him. And he's laughing his head off in my face. Like, you've got to kill him. <laughs> like, you know, I'm going, put me fucking down. He goes, no, you kill him. In walks Brian Dixon. You, he says, are on first. You're going to ruin my show. Like, get it back. Okay. So they throw me out of the dressing room. I had gone into another dressing room, got changed. And I was on with a guy called John Kenny. Where I've already hyped up. Now, poor John didn't get a, get a thing. I mean, I took it out on him, unfortunately. And at the end of the, the bout, I've come out of the ring. John has gone through the dressing room, gone towards the dressing room, gone through the double doors. Then he's coming back and he's walking towards me. I went, oh, well, up. He's got a serious look on his face. I thought, is he going to have a go at me or what? Like, you know, so I'm getting ready to sort of turn sideways. I don't want to be in the bollocks or anywhere like that. So as he walked past, he went, the old Bill's here. I went, what? Someone said, did he say the police is here? Went, oh, sugar. So as I've gone through double doors, five of the biggest swines you wish to meet. I went, Jesus Christ. He says, uh, Mr. Kincaid, this is a big sergeant. I went, yeah. He says, we've had a complaint from Mr. Adrian Street, Esquire, for assault. Why can't you guys sort it out amongst yourselves? I tried, I said, but he wouldn't have none of it. Like, okay, he said, I'm sorry, mate, we've got to take you down the shop. I said, fine, okay, then. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to have a shower, I'll get dressed, and I'll come with you. As I'm walking off, there's this uh, copper following me. I said, oh, excuse me. Where are you going? I said, we're three floors up. I mean, if you think I'm going to climb out a window and jump, you're vastly mistaken. I don't like heights. I said, I'm going to have a shower. Unless you're kinky and want to watch me. No, 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 nothing like that. So he turned around and went back. I had my shower, got dressed, came out, went down the police station. They didn't put me in a cell at first, as I was first on. So it must have been about nine o'clock-ish when I got to the station. I sat there until 12 o'clock talking to the desk sergeant and um, about everything in general. He said, I'm sorry, Johnny, we've got to put you in a, in a uh, cell until Mr. Street's been here to make his... Uh, I said, where is he? Went, hospital. I went, what? She said, hospital. I went, what the hell for? They didn't say much after that. I, they put me in a cell and uh, about three o'clock in the morning, they let me out. He said, Mr. Street has just gone. I went, oh, right. 
There was a wrestler waiting for me there, Billy Stock. He said, your car's locked up in a car park. Mine wasn't, it was it's outside the, the stadium, he said. So as you haven't got a car to get home with, I thought I'd come and meet you and take you home because he lived um, quite close to where I lived then. I said, what's wrong street? He said, well, apparently, he said, um, I thought he'd been in a boxing match. I went, really? He said, he said he's got a cracked cheekbone. Um, He's had stitches put in his forehead, he's got a broken nose, airline fracture on his jaw. I mean, oh, really? Oh, nice. But the following week, cut a long story short, the following week I was in court. I was a pound over to kick the piece for one year, £500. In those days, £500 was a lot of living money. When we came out of court, he said, uh, what are we going to do now? I said, nothing. Provide you pay me what you owe me. Which was peanuts to him. It was only like... Two and a half hundred, something like that. I said, pay me. If you don't pay me, I'll do it exact the same thing again. I will follow you, but this time I will follow you around, up north, down south, wherever. And you will get another paste in. Now this is where he thinks he's, he's made a good one, because he sent Gene a cheque for, let's say, the two and a half hundred quid. But he didn't pay me. So that's how he looked at it. Yeah. He wasn't paying me, he paid Gene. Oh dear! Yeah, I know, and he's, he's now um, wrote six books. Yes, right? and in one of the books, he's told that many lies about Gene and myself. There was one bit of truth in it, but he's told so many lies about Gene and myself, and a lot more about me and what I was supposed to have done. This, that, and other. We was talking after this court case. We got talking again. You know, we got talking. We became friends. We went to parties, we'd done this, we'd done that together. Um, everything was sweet. But just recently, and it was this year, that someone said, have you, have you read this, John? I went, what? Is it this book of Adrian's. I went, no, he said, I folded the pages where you have mentioned. And I read it, and I was Skyping, and we used to Skype each other. And I uh, had to say to him, you are one arsehole of a guy. All the, you must... He must have had this eaten up inside him all those years. Yeah. You know, myself, yeah. and you actually wrote about it now. You know, well, I'm, I'm just glad that it must have hurt you that bad. Or what you wrote about me, you know. Oh, I didn't realise that. I've not not read them, so, yeah. Oh, I didn't realise yeah, that. Yeah. Ah, so there's the Adrian Street story. Yeah. Marvellous, yeah. I got Honestly, I've got so much here. I've got things about you being poisoned by somebody for upsetting yeah. somebody. Yeah. But, I, do you know, I think we're going to have to definitely look at doing a part two uh, to this in a few months' time. I think that's probably that's probably the best way around it. Um, I do have a question from a fan, Paul Dougie Douglas, uh, which is why earlier I was asking you how you got on with Kendo Nagasaki when he was a little bit younger. Right. Tell me about Kendo Nagasaki recently attending the reunion. Kendo is... He doesn't want to know anybody. I mean, I don't know if he's come with age... Or what? Or is is believing his own publicity? But he just doesn't want to know any of the boys. Um, at the reunion, uh, he didn't want to mix with anybody. He, he was offered to get changed upstairs in Bill Bridges, or Wayne Bridges' pub. You know, get changed up there and meet a few of the lads. Didn't want to know. Yeah. It's a reunion. <laughs> but he thought it was all about him. What is, has he has he lost the plot? Has he? He's definitely lost the plot. Um, what would he be? So, so your kind of age, seventy-ish? Yeah, he's, he's in his seventies. Yeah, yeah, early seventies. How can you go to a reunion and not speak to anybody? That 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 kind of defies the um, meaning of the word reunion, doesn't he's, it? He's still living his publicity like uh, the silent man. When he was wrestling, like he never spoke he, to, to us in the dressing room. Yes, he did, right? But he wouldn't talk to any of the punters. The fans or anything, yeah. Right? He wouldn't talk. He just scribbled his so-called Japanese uh, signature. <laughs> uh, but uh, he uh, in the dressing room is entirely different. But now he is, just wouldn't talk to any of us. And honestly, there's so much more stuff from your book. And then I know when you finished wrestling, you did pubs, and you you, you literally have had a, a fascinating life. And there's so many more stories that I would love you to tell, like you say about the poisoning in India and almost dying, and yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> so much stuff. So we will revisit in a few months' time. Right, you are. If that's okay with you. Well, uh, 
few more poems for you as well. Thanks for listening to Seconds Away. It's night time. We hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, please help.